A lot of people have asked me to tell my story, as it were, the story of how I started in this industry and how I became a hairdresser and how I've ended up today being the owner of, of Unite. And it's been quite a journey, an enjoyable journey. I'm still on it, still got some way to go. But when I talk about this, I'm going to talk about people that have helped me get to where I am today. And this is going all the way back to when I was 16 and I first started in the industry. I knew I wanted to be a hairdresser from the age of 14, which sounds really funny, but I'm sure a lot of you out there that are hairdressers had that thought as well. I wanted to do something in the fashion industry, whether it be designing, in fashion, or hair. And hair was something that I thought would be really enjoyable. And obviously it has been, and it's been an incredible journey for me. So the first time I walked into a salon was to have an interview with a company called Steiner. Um, Steiner were around back in the 70s and the 80s. Um, very sort of shampoo and set and big hair. Um, but they were in a shopping centre, Brent Cross Shopping Centre, which is basically the beginning of the M1, uh, which was probably about 15 miles away from, from my house where I lived with my parents. So I thought, you know, I'm going to go and get a job in a hair salon, and that seems to be a really good one. Had a great name. So I went up there to Brent Cross with my mother. She took me up there, and we went in, and um, I had my interview. Um, interview went well, and I was hired. So working in a shopping centre, as it were, within Steiner's. And there was one gentleman that worked in there, Kerry O'Sullivan, um, who was the top hairdresser in there. He was very good. Um, and he took me under his wing and really became a mentor for me in the very beginning. Um, I've seen Kerry since then. Kerry's got a salon up in Stoke-on-Trent, up in England, um, close to Manchester area. Um, it's doing very well. Um, but he really helped me in the beginning. I always remember when I watched him cut hair, he cut hair because he'd been trained at Videl Sassoon's and I thought, wow, this is amazing the way this guy cuts hair. And he was using these scissors, they were like four and a half inches, Joel scissors. And I'm sure a lot of you older guys out there watching this will know about the Joel scissors, four and a half inches. I thought, wow, they're so tiny, but he cuts hair so well with them. After six months, Kerry said to me, I think you should go on a Fidel Sassoon course. And I'm like, I'm not ready. I mean, I've only been apprenticing with you for six months. He said, no, I think you should do it. So I literally saved up all my money and I went on a one week course, the basic beginner's course at Fidel Sassoon's. And this is where I met a second mentor or somebody who's helped me in my industry to progress. And it was Andrew Joes. And Andrew Joes was basically, you know, running the Davis Street um, academy there and brilliant hairdresser, brilliant hair cutter and he was teaching me on the course and you know he could see that I was really enjoying it and getting into it and he said wow he said well you know where do you work and I was a little bit embarrassed saying to him well I've only been doing this for six months and I probably shouldn't be here but you know I'm, I'm here and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. He said no he said he said you're doing really well he said why don't you apply at Videl Sassoon's for a job? And I'm like, really? He said, absolutely. He said, we have some interviews coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'd like to get you on one of the interviews for them. And I said, that would be incredible. Because obviously at that age, 16 years of age, back in, I think it was 78, 79, you know, Sassoon's was the most amazing place that a hairdresser could work. The name was just, you know, phenomenal throughout the world. So obviously this was exciting for me. Um, I went to the interview, there was about 200 kids on the interview, and I think 20 of us got through. And I was extremely fortunate that, that I got through. I don't know if it had anything to do with Andrew Joes, why I got through, um, but he certainly helped me get to that point. So then, um, I leave Steiner, um, and my friends that I'd had there in the hairdressing industry and moved on, and started working at Videl Sassoon's on Bond Street. Um, very, very overwhelming in the beginning. Five stories with over 80 hairdressers working in one location. You know, and I'd just come from a salon that probably had 20 people working in it, and I thought that was busy and a bit crazy. This was like over the top. Over 80 hairdressers working in five stories on Bond Street. But boy, did, did that, you know, set a real impression to me of like, 
this is it. Like, this is the top. This is where I should have been working in the beginning. So I worked there and, and built up, um, you know, on my training days. And our training days were um, every Tuesday and every Wednesday evening. So at six o'clock, when the salon had closed down, we had two hours of training, you know? So I did that every week. And the other thing that I did, and they offered us to this at Vidal Sassoon's, which I thought was brilliant, was, you know, our days off were Sunday and Monday, hairdressers weekend. And um, they asked me if I would be interested on my day off on Monday, going to the London College of Fashion and doing a course at the London College of Fashion. It was a two year course. So literally every day off, apart from in the summer breaks, um, I would be going on my day off to the London College of Fashion, which I thought was amazing. They paid for it all for me, which was incredible. So I took the course um, and we did fashion design and hair work um, at the London College of Fashion and I was able to leave there with distinctions, which was brilliant and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. While doing that, I was obviously working on my way to become a stylist in the salon because I was still an apprentice at Fidel Sassoon's. Um, when they closed the Bond Street Salon down, I moved to South Moulton Street and there was a gentleman there that was managing the salon called Michael Stannard. Um, and Michael really, really, I would say, looked after me in a big way. He saw how energetic I was and how I wanted to grow and become a stylist very quickly. H. Peters, who was the art director in that salon, really helped me with my work, honing my skills and, and getting me to where I you know, needed to be. Um, he was one of the top art directors. And the other thing that was great about H, H. Peters was one of the one of the five, I would say, hairdressers out of Vidal Sassoon's that would do session work, um, editorial magazine, London Fashion Week, and he helped me hone my skills with dressing hair and working with hair. Um, so then when I did become a stylist on the floor, I was able to be another one of those hairdressers that weren't many of them that Vidal Sassoon's had that would go and do editorial work and London Fashion Week with H, and with some of the other guys, you know, that, that were doing those sessions, which was great. So literally by the age of, I think I was 18 and a half, nearly 19, I became a stylist um, on the floor at Vidal Sassoon's and I started work on Sloan Street, uh, Sloan Street in Knightsbridge and building up, you know, my clientele there, which was great. And also doing the session work. So, you know, a couple of days a week, I would be off working with a magazine or when Fashion Week was happening, I would be doing Fashion Week in London and then I'd get on the tube and we'd fly to Paris and do Pret as well, which was great. And this is when I was like 19, 20 years old, which was a real buzz. It was absolutely amazing. Then at the age of 21, Vidal Sassoon's, the American uh, group, was taken over by the original British group, um, Hair Care Limited. So, you know, they approached me and said, would you like to work in America? And in the beginning, I sort of said, no, I'd, I'd rather go to Germany, you know, because I'm a bit of a car buff and I wanted to, you know, buy a nice car and drive home on weekends from Germany if I was working in Munich or somewhere like that. And they said, you know, no, we'd, we'd really like you to, to work in America. Try it for a couple of years. So I said, okay. So at the age of 21, uh, and I remember it was 1983, August the 1st, was when I flew to America. Um, so that, you know, makes it, you know, 39 and a half years that I've been in America now. But I remember landing in America and um, I started working um, at the academy in Santa Monica teaching um, to get my license, as it were, my, my cosmetology license, um, which obviously was very alien to me coming from Europe. Um, but I did work in the academy, teaching in the academy in Santa Monica, and then got my license and started work on Rodeo Drive. Uh, in Beverly Hills and was very fortunate um, to have some friends in the industry that I'd actually known from London that had moved out to America, weren't working for Sassoon's, they were doing session work or they were working for John Frieda um, and some of the other brands that Michael John that was out there. Um, so it, it was great because I had some friends that I knew from London that were in the industry. And the nice thing about it was they knew that I loved cutting hair and I was pretty good at cutting hair. So they got me some great clients and, you know, from the age of 21 to probably the age of 25, 26, um, working in Los Angeles, I had clients like Carol Burnett, Faye Dunaway, Vanessa Redgrave, Elvira, Sting, um, and they became my clients, which, which was great. 
uh, loved working with them. Um, and that was a lot of fun for me. Also, you know, when there was some sort of session work to be done in Los Angeles, they called me up knowing that I'd done some session work in, in London as well. And I think the 10 years that I spent at Videl Sassoon's were absolutely brilliant in the sense that I had 10 years of really solid training. Um, and when we talk about work ethic, uh, discipline and sacrifice, these are the kind of things that you have to do. It took me 10 years of working with a brand like Videl Sassoon's to be able to say to myself, right, I'm ready for the next chapter. And what was that next chapter? Well, the next chapter was opening my first salon in Los Angeles. And, you know, I probably should have gone for a smaller salon, um, but I didn't. I went for a 3,000 square foot salon with 26 chairs in it, um, with massive retail area. Um, we were almost, when, when we opened, um, in 1986, 87 when we opened. Um, it was a beauty supply in the front before beauty supplies ever existed. So it was in a shopping mall because I wanted to be open seven days a week. I wanted to make sure that I could capture all of the clients that needed to come in Sunday and Monday when most salons are closed. I wanted to be open so we could accommodate those clients. And we were open till nine o'clock at night, majority of the week. Um, obviously for clients that wanted to come later after work. And the retail area in the front was very important for me because I knew that clients you know, wanted to have um, a way of being able to get products that the stylists were using on their hair in the salon. So we opened the salon and it did extremely well. And from there I went on to open four more, um, four more salons. And I probably had about 120 hairdressers working with me over the years that I've had the salons. Um, it, that was a lot of fun. It was enjoyable. Making sure that when clients walked through the door, they not only felt good when they left, but they looked amazing as well. Um, had a training program for all of the assistants in there, and we trained the assistants up pretty much the same way that we did at Fidel Sassoon's. So I took a page out of their book and said, right, if we're going to have an amazing salon, if these salons are going to have great quality in their work, then the staff have to be trained properly. So every week we would have staff training for anybody that was a stylist. They still had to have some training and all of the assistants had eight hours of training every week to make sure that when they did go on the floor as a stylist, they were prepared to take on anything that walked through the door. So working with those salons, I, I, I not only had fun running the salons, working in the salons, but I was also asked by numerous product companies <clears throat> to become their art directors and literally do their photo shoots, um, do their product developments and go on the road and teach for them as well. So I think, you know, three companies over the 10 years, um, uh, 15 years, sorry, of working in my salons, I actually worked with three major companies and I did some of their big product releases, did some of their big shows, um, always did the big shows where they'd be New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, traveling around. And then after I'd done that for, for many years, I said, you know what? I think I can create a product company on my own. And everyone I talked to was like, you're crazy. You're, you're absolutely nuts. It's, ne it's never going to happen. And I'm like, no, I, I think I can really do it. And that, that gave me more incentive to want to do this more and more. When somebody tells me you can't do something, it makes me want to do that more and more. It makes me want to prove to them that you're wrong. It, it can be done. So... Literally, 2003 is when Unite was, was born, as it were, when it came into existence. And a couple of the people that helped me um, bring this brand to fruition and are still with me today, um, Nikki Newbath, that um, was my general manager of all of my salons, she started with me when she was 18 as an esthetician um, and became a phenomenal general manager um, from that. Um, and, you know, she wanted to come on board with Unite and work with me when I sold the salons. And I said, absolutely, it'd be great. And then another friend of mine who, who I'd met through some other friends, Jared Trombetta, um, who I met when he was 20. Um, I said to him, you know, this is the plan of what I'm going to do and I'd love you to come along with me. Um, and he'd obviously been, you know, at USD and got degrees and 
MBAs and all of that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm like, no, I'd like you to be a shampoo salesman, uh, which was obviously very alien for him, you know, having all of this sort of college degrees and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm like, no, I think it would be good. Um, and it worked out, you know, obviously um, for him in the long run. But it was the three of us that started um, the brand back in 2003. I had one salon left. We had an office in the back room. And that was really where we sat around a table and said, right, we've got this brand. We've got, I think, five or six products. What are we going to do with it? And this sounds really funny and really simple, but it was this simple. Jared was like, I'll go out and sell the products in the salon. Dale, you will come in and do the education and the product knowledge and promote the brand, do a haircut, do some sort of styling and finishing. <laughs> and Nikki, when they want the product, you'll pack it in the boxes and you'll ship it. <clears throat> sounds simple, right? And that's how simple it actually was. Um, we started out of my garage first because that's all we could afford. Then we went to a lock-up warehouse and if we didn't get the product shipped out by six o'clock at night, they either locked us in or locked us out. So we, we had to get that done very quickly. And then we got to a point where we could afford um, a warehouse. Not in a great area, um, <clears throat> pretty dodgy area, but it was all we could afford. So we did that and then we hired one warehouse person to pack and ship the boxes and we hired another sales consultant with Jared and we thought we were rolling. Um, and then we just sort of tried to get into as many salons as we could. And then one of the biggest things that I think took us to the next level was uh, an old friend um, who really was a great mentor for me and Unite as well was a gentleman called John Maley, who owned Maley's uh, distribution. And I'd worked for John in the past, doing some education for him, and he knew me quite well. So, you know, we'd got into about 100, 110 salons, which I thought was really good for Jared, one sales consultant, you know, with one warehouse guy, and Nikki pretty much trying to put everything together, and me doing all the education. <clears throat> so I phoned up John and I said, you know, got hold of his secretary, and I said, I'd really like to speak to John. Um, what do you want to speak to him about? Well, I've got a product line, and I want some advice from him. And his secretary on the other end of the phone said, well, he's very, very busy. He's traveling now. I'll see when he can get back to you. What's your number? And go from there. Put the phone down. So I was in the office with Jared and Nikki, and I said, I doubt if we'll get a call back. He seems pretty busy, and he's, I don't even know if his secretary will even pass the message on. 30 minutes later, we get a call back, and it's John's secretary. And she said, uh, John would like to see you next week. And I'm like, okay, great, are we traveling? No, luckily we weren't. He said, uh, uh, Monday, and I'm like, okay, great. So Jared and I thought, right, this, this could be great. We're gonna get some amazing advice from, from John Maley, you know, who's got literally the largest distribution in all of North America. So we went up to Los Angeles and stayed in a hotel overnight <clears throat> on the Sunday because we did not want to be late for this meeting, going all the way from where we were, all the way up to where Magic Mountain is, where his offices were, or his warehouse. So we get there on Monday morning, I sit down, I said, you know, John, I'm here for some advice on our brands. You obviously know how brands work and, and what's happened, and I'd really like your advice on what we can do. And he said, well, why aren't you trying to sell me your product? I said, John, you know, you've got 300 sales consultants. You're the largest distributor in North America. Why would you want a brand like ours? And these were the words that he said. Because my managers are telling me that you're in salons that we can't get into. Ken Pavis Salon, Christoph Salon, all of the top salons in Beverly Hills and the salons around Los Angeles, San Diego, greater areas. And I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, you know, all of my managers are asking me, why is that brand in there and why don't we have that brand? So, long story short, we launched with Maley's and literally that rocketed us to the next level because John was obviously friends with the other distributors within the industry. And I think within 18 months, we were in 16 distribution houses. That's really what took us from where we were to the next level. <clears throat> and you can see where we've gone from there. Now we're in probably nearly 30 countries. 
and ended up in a warehouse which is 65,000 square feet, um, shipping pretty much six days a week, um, which has been fantastic. But again, you know, that was another one of those mentors that's helped me. One person that really helped me with all of my training to hone in the skills that I have when it comes to haircutting and working with clients was a guy called Nick Slingsby. Um, and he was at Fidel Sassoon's as well. And what's interesting, I talked about Michael Stannard and Nick Slingsby. They went on to open up an amazing salon in Knightsbridge called Stannard and Slingsby. And I have to thank those two gentlemen for really helping me um, and, and getting me to where I am today, which is great. And John Maley from obviously helping us with the product line and taking that to the next level, as it, as it were, as well. Things that have really happened in, in the journey that I've taken, um, I've never given up. Um, we've obviously been through some very hard times. I mean, next year will be our 20th year that we've had this brand. Um, in the beginning, the first six, seven years, we could have gone bankrupt maybe four times, but I stuck at it. I said, you know what, we've got to stick at this. It's a great brand, we're doing the right thing. The product performs. We're working with not only the consumer, but hairdressers to build them as well. We gotta keep going on doing this. And somehow, magically, something always happened to make us move forward, which makes me believe that now into our 20th year that we're coming into next year, this brand was meant to be. And it was meant to be a brand that hairdressers get behind, and it was meant to be a brand that succeeds. Um, and it really comes from the team that you build around you as well. So whenever you're thinking about starting your own brand, think about the team that's gonna be around you. Think about mentors that have helped you and mentors in the future that can help you move on as well. I still today have mentors that, that I work with, that I talk with, um, and ask them about things that they've done in their brands and their businesses. And some of them have got multi, multi-million dollar brands that they work in. Um, and certain things that, you know, you think can be a challenge, can really be very, very simple. It's just working things out black and white, taking out the gray area, which I always talk about, and just literally simplifying things, yeah, to make them work. So getting the right people around you, surrounding yourself with the right people is very important. I think outside of your brand as well, you know, um, this sounds funny, but I heard it a long time ago and it's actually quite true. Surrounding yourself with successful people actually helps you become successful as well because you look at what they're actually doing to become successful and you look at those people and see what they do in their day-to-day -day activities that makes them successful as well and I guarantee you none of them are lazy all of them have discipline all of them are sacrificed and all of them have a passion for what they do and that's really what it takes I hope this short story really helped you learn a little bit more about me um, and what I do. My journey is far from over with Unite. We have a long way to go. Obviously, Go24-7 is another amazing brand that we're going to be working on a lot more as well. But hopefully in a few years from now, we can do another one of these with the extended journey. So thanks for listening and thanks for supporting Unite.